coming up on Techzilla, we build a frickin' PC from scratch. Plus, a do-it-yourself bomb-proof encrypted thumb drive. Hells yeah! And it's time to back up your DVDs. In this week's episode, which is brought to you by Drobo, DNS Stuff, GoDaddy.com, and the big heart of manatee in your backyard crushing your rose bushes. Hello and welcome to the show. It's officially 2008. And I'm officially paying attention now. Yes, and How I'm officially final, finally sober. Finally sober. <laughs> I didn't and wake you up. Didn't, yeah. It's the, the best thing about being sober is not waking up hungover on the first day of the I, I'm sure that that will be a wonderful experience when it happens. Hopefully me. your headaches have passed. And actually, <laughs> if they haven't, cover your ears right now. That's the sound of a bomb. See, we don't even know what he's going to do that because it's so not even scripted. Oh my God. <laughs> really? Well, that's, I mean, it didn't break. What, what did you well, want to prove with that? Well, that's the USB we drive. The door, We're going to talk about bomb proofing portable USB data. Evidently. Hopefully it didn't break. <laughs> All right. So back to the issue at hand. Are you guys tired of your DVDs taking up shelf space? Absolutely. Now, do you, you want to drop a couple of your fave movies onto your notebook or Every your time iPod? I travel. Got a three year old that thinks that DVD hockey rules? You need to back up those DVDs. Okay, backing up DVDs. Not hard, it's just illegal in the United States if the DVD you want to back up uh, has copy protection, which pretty much means every movie or TV series you might buy in DVD format. Got that straight? Yeah. Good. So we're going to list our couple of favorites, one for OS X, one uh -huh. for Windows. Mm -hmm. And yes, in this particular case, I have the owner's permission to use the not encrypted disk uh, to copy it in these machines because I helped him make the movies, therefore he gave me the permission. Now, on Windows, DVD Shrink is still my fave, though they stopped developing a new version a while back, like 2004 which kind of sucks. Now, the nice thing about DVD Shrink, it's really easy, basically pulls all the data off and can either give you all of the data from the DVD or you can select parts of the data and shrink them so you can fit them to, to basically back up on a new DVD. Got it. So it's a pretty easy tool. Now, on OS X, my favorite is definitely Handbrake. It's more about the video than about grabbing the data off the disk, but it's a really clean utility with a ton of customizable settings. Now, it's designed to automatically back your DVDs up to MPEG-4 in a fairly painless manner. Now, if you can't copy that disk, well, there's new macrovision protection, there's some interesting stuff they're doing that's going to, could, and is most likely to break either one of these tools, i.e. not allow you to copy the disk. If you're curious, if you're curious, always, always, <laughs> it's good always to be curious. curious. You're still, uh, you, you had a good New Year's. <laughs> if you're curious, you know, like kind of on the next step of dealing with copying DVDs or dealing with really tough uh, protection, email us, techzilla at revision3.com. And we'll get uh, we'll get like hardcore about uh, moving the DVD data off. And 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 listen, don't crack those DVDs so you can steal them or post them online. Yeah, basically, if you don't own the DVD, don't copy it. Yeah, that, not just her, you guys too. Okay, we're gonna cut over our very own Nehatwari. Actually, did something interesting today. Five hundred dollar PC. She's building her first PC out of those parts. Let's take a look at part one. It's a major step in a young geek's life to build their first PC. Neha's ready to take the plunge. Right, I'm ready to be a stage five geek. With rabies. I don't want to have rabies though. Yeah, this probably isn't really like stage five geek no. with rabies thing. But no. it's called a stage three geek thing. Okay. Okay. All right. You sound a little disappointed. Yeah, it was kind of banking on the stage five thing. But anyways, I'm here <laughs> to build my very first PC. I'm very excited. This is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. We got the motherboard outside of the case, yes. right? Because generally it's easier to get um, the memory and the processor and the heatsink on outside of the case. Then we're going to put the motherboard inside of the case and we're going to basically talk about everything else. Okay, so first things first, we're just going to put a whole bunch of stuff into the mobile. Should we get the scariest thing out of the way first? Yes. All right, so we were practicing this before. We've got the processor. It's kind of nice. The new processors, they just have those flat buttons on them. And this yeah. is going to be a little hairy. Uh, you can see in the, in the close-up shot here, we found out why this was an open box motherboard. There's a bent pin on the PC socket. So if this doesn't boot, it's not your fault. Okay. And I'm going to be sending this back. So All right. You want to go ahead and open up the uh, case sure. there? Sure. So I think you just have to pull this lever out and then uh, you just pull this little latch. Um, there you go. So. All right. And then um, I guess you're just going to line up the little uh, the tabs. slots, the little tabs. Okay. Seems, seems simple enough. It's pretty okay. good. Okay. I got it in. Flip that down. Okay. It and takes a little more force than you think it okay. does. I, I don't have muscle, but you okay. have muscle. There you're we doing go. Good. Now, <laughs> memory. Power. 
is pretty easy, and uh, if you can actually get it out of the plastic and came in. It's, is that the most challenging part? I, for me, apparently. Okay. Here. All right, let me, let me give it a shot. So you're going to line up the uh, pin inside of there. Basically, there's a slot that lines up, and we're going to use yellow to yellow because that's the dim one, and it's dual channel, so we want to sync those up. And, and so this, the yellow does differ from the black one? Basically, uh, it's a dual channel versus not dual channel thing. Dual channel's good. <laughs> okay. We like dual channel. It should make for maximum performance. Okay. Uh, actually, flip that back around. Okay. I had it right the first time. Well, you know what it is? Do one side, then the other, and press down really hard. Okay. There we, there go. we go. It just it just snaps right in. Yeah, but it's like, it's like aggro snapping in. It's, it always <laughs> takes, for that, I mean, for the for the PCI cards, not so much, but for memory, you always kind of have to seem to like... It takes a bit of force. All right. These are kind of easier than they used to be because they already have the... Uh, the uh, thermal conductor um, pre-laid out on there, so you don't have to figure out how to do a really thin layer of Arctic silver. Remember Ooh. Arctic silver? Um, <laughs> but what is kind of tough is you're gonna have to line up these pins okay. with the pins and the holes in the motherboard right there. So you can see there's like, here, hold that so I don't drop it down sure. on a fabulous table. So you're gonna line it up with these four pins, and then you're gonna press down these two, and then basically press down, you know, these two, and then press down these two to lock them into the motherboard. Does it matter which way I put well, it? Well, I think they're only the going to line up one way. Let's take they're a look at that. They're only going to line up. All right. Let's see here. That oh. actually looks pretty good. I think I got it. Basically, going to press them down on opposite sides at the same time. That keeps the stuff going down equally. Okay. I already got this one down. Now, let's go ahead and press this down and see if you can get this side. There we go. So, one last thing. You want to grab the power cord here, yeah. and we're going to plug that right there because cooling is good. Yes. Feeling good? I'm feeling good. This is not as bad as I envisioned. You want to put the processor back on again? No. All right. Jessica? Next, I've got a little something up my sleeve for all you music fanatics out there, but first, listen up. It's that time again, folks. That's right, yet another flu season is hitting hard and you might be searching for answers online. If so, look at medgul.com. Unlike webmd.com, this personalized med search site cuts right to the chase of diagnosis. Medgul claims that visitors can get over 2,000 diagnoses from their 6,000 plus symptoms menu. The site also has some Gray's Anatomy-esque drawings, a drug directory, and procedure details. Overall, a good resource on the web if you're ever curious about what that, well, uh, rash might just be a symptom of, and uh, I don't even want to know, but remember to always consult your doctor, but check out medical.com for some additional information. DNS Report is a cool tool and the most powerful and comprehensive way to check the health of your DNS. 56 tests run against your domain in seconds. Get peace of mind at dnsstuff.com, a reliable go-to site that has everything you need. DNS is vulnerable though. Remember, no DNS, no internet. Type Techzilla into the coupon code when you buy a tool set and get 10 bucks off. How rad is that? Okay, so I have all the stuff on the motherboard uh -huh. and I need a Place it somewhere. You've populated the motherboard. We're going to put it inside the case. Now, in this one, because the, the power supply doesn't block, you know, obscure, make it hard, to, you don't have to take the power supply out to put the motherboard in. We've got the power supply in. Um, we've got it rigged up with the power cables, right. including the special, is it the, the ATV12 cables on here? Because you need like two power cables for this motherboard. Uh, one's the main one. Hold that one up, the big giant one. Big one. And uh, there's a four pin cable around here somewhere. There it is, and that's going to also go into our motherboard. So, so all this stuff is what's going to give it power. Exactly. So, so basically, we've got one for the motherboard. Oops. Oops. Two for the motherboard. Okay. And then we're going to use these Molex connectors or the serial ATA power connectors are going to power up our drives, the DVD drive and the hard drive. Awesome. We're going to do that a little later. Right, right. now, though. So the hardest part of this is making sure you've got risers, which are those little brass things inside of there, right. um, matching up with the holes on the motherboard. And these provide your support for the motherboards. So you want to make sure you have a riser for pretty much each one of those. So you see how those line up there? Mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing when you buy a new case, like I have a bag like this. I have a, actually, I have a, like a cat food case plastic thing <laughs> full of parts like this. There's some little tiny screws in there and little tiny plastic washers. Those are critical because you need those to hold the motherboard down. Don't lose this bag. Okay, so you can see in Nao's hand, we've got the pile of screws there, the washers. We've got you an Apple box. So, okay, it's okay. We got plenty. That's why they give you the big bag of hardware that you don't lose. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so you're going to basically, uh, you're going to put the washer on the screw, screw on the screwdriver. This is great to have a magnetic screwdriver, although yes. I can hear some people 
the same people are going to email us about not having any static straps on. So right. you're going to hold that in place and you've got this position and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those to go. Okay. We'll be back to actually install the graphics cards, the drives, and hold on. And I'll still be tall. <laughs> now it's time for Code Red. Watch live and uncut music videos at takeawayshows.com, a video podcast produced by the French weblog La Blagotech, where they grab a band and create music videos with them on the street, in urban environments with natural life noise, with no added artificial light, which makes you feel like you're right there with them. And in fact, it's quite voyeuristic. Directed by Vincent Moon, this crazy, beautiful, wonderful, young French prolific director whose videos are filmed using one long meandering camera shot without any cuts, which encourages improvisation and spontaneity. These incredible videos will take you all around the world. Some of my favorites, Paris, Brooklyn, Manhattan. Now some of my favorite videos have got to be uh, Menomina. This, this one is so rich, but you won't be able to see it until about 60 seconds in, so hang on, and then the, the, the beauty will just smack you upside the head. And then another one that I love, Arcade Fire. If you're a fan, check him out in an elevator. This guy captures, you know, these bands in the most unlikely urban settings in an elevator. And then another one, The National. I love The National, um, and he captures them around a, a table with like a single, you know, uh, candle, and you just feel like you're at the table with them, and they're singing you a song. It's just glorious, I love it. I could watch these videos for hours. So check it out, takeawayshows.com. Now, coming up, a do-it-yourself, bomb-proof, encrypted thumb drive. <laughs> it doesn't get more exciting than that, <laughs> but first, Get ready for a music adventure when you hop onto the 61.com. Like Pandora, but based on user picks, this site hopes to introduce users to cool new artists and tunes. Rockers can upload their melodies, and 61.comies can listen to the full tracks, then bump them up to the homepage. Any artist, big or small, can put up their stuff. The two founders were really passionate about that detail. With a simple interface and easy rating system, the 61.com is sure to evolve into a bookmark worthy site for any music file. Now this is actually starting to look like a real computer. It is. Yeah. We're also getting to sort of the part that's kind of grinding it out, right? You notice we got the cables taped out here to keep the yes. power cables out of our way until we need them. Um, I always hate this part because a lot of times you have to take the faceplate off to get inside there. Just Yank, just it, yank off. it off. Okay. It's just a terrifying moment. And, right. Uh, I don't want to break anything. This one's, yeah, this case is crazy because <laughs> there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Counting's hard. Uh, drive bay is <laughs> on there. As you can see, it's pulling that out and putting a DVD in is pretty easy. You're going to slide the drive in from the back. Okay. Basically, or I should say from the front. From the front, rather. That would be the opposite of the back. <laughs> and. You know, it's so funny when I was doing this before, it was so smooth like that. Okay, so it just slides right in. Yeah, and then you're basically going to put these pins in here. And it's just that easy. So whatever drives that you have, you would put in the appropriate slot. Exactly. And there's like on this side, and then there's also if you're like sort of a boots and suspenders, boots and suspenders, a <laughs> belt and suspenders kind of person, you can lock them down with more keys on the other side. Okay. Now, I'm going to let you do the hard drive in a second, but before that, let's talk about our power for these, right? So let's get our motherboard one plugged in. Okay. And that's the big giant plug here. And you're going to pop that right in there. Okay. Now, is there a particular way or just? Basically, you want to make sure, there you go. It, it'll only let you plug it in the right way. Okay. That. And support that a little bit. You don't want to bend the motherboard too much. There we go. And remember that four pin connector? Yes. And we're going to get that four pin connector in place. Okay. This one? Uh, that's a Molex connector. That's this the one. motherboard four pin. Okay. And this goes? That's going to go right there. 
In fact, you know what? Let's hold off on that one for a second. Let's put the. Okay. You want to put the graphics card in first? Yeah, I think that might be better just so that doesn't obstruct. Graphics card away. This is going to give me all those flat graphics, huh? That's going to give you uh, basic graphics. It's a pretty inexpensive card there. Um, yep, you're going to line it up with the slot. Okay, and, and same, same principle, just kind of press one, down. Yeah, this one you want to press down. And you might have to wiggle it a little bit. All right. There we go. I think we, we go. got it. I think okay, you do. Okay, it's locked in. Uh, that's your screw to hold that down. And so I would just put this screw right up here. Exactly. Just Actually, let it. me steal this power cable for a second. Okay. So while you're doing that, um, we're going to put the hard drive inside, which is going to take a serial ATA connector. That's the power, I should say the serial ATA power connector. And then the serial ATA connector right here. We're going to plug those into the motherboard. And uh, then we will almost be ready to boot the machine. Should we come back when we're ready to boot? I think so. I'm totally excited about that if I could ever get the screw in. <laughs> those are tough. <laughs> All here. right, got it. There you got go. Got it. Get it vertical. Here, slide yep. this over like that. All right. There you go. Got it? Yep. We'll be right back. This episode of Techzilla and the following backup segment are brought to you by Drobo, the world's first storage robot and the easiest way to protect your data. Drobo expands forever and it's award winning with the highest CNET rating for storage ever. Go to Drobo.com and save 50 bucks by entering the code Techzilla. So how do you make a DIY bomb-proof encrypted thumb drive? All right, first off, you find yourself a quality thumb drive. Something like this, you can't see the name. You don't want a brand name model from a reputable company, not the one that came free with a can of Coke or a press release, unless the press release came from a pretty good company that makes memory, right? Yes. Okay, if you got the cash, get one with a fancy milled aluminum case. It's waterproof to umpteen zillion atmospheres and can, well, can be run over by a truck. Or toss inside something, you know, waterproof. Like this fabulous case <laughs> that can be run over by a truck. It's another auto That you box. threw at the wall earlier. Yes, that's the one you heard <laughs> ricocheting around. Okay, good so far. Now, what else do you do to get the encrypted part? Download TrueCrypt. Install it. Now, it's pretty easy to set up the password. Don't forget the password. The hardest part with TrueCrypt, let me show you this really quickly, is actually opening up the file once you've created it, right? Okay. It's pretty easy to step through and create a password and create this locked file on the thumb drive. When okay. you open it, you've got to go through the interface on the front of TrueCrypt. It gives you a list of drives. None of those are going to be the drive you're looking for. Okay. Just click on that, open a file, that the one you want to unlock, and TrueCrypt's basically going to pass it through. It's a little weird, okay. but it works out in the end. Okay. And don't show off how waterproof your USB drive is by putting it in a cup of coffee or during, you know. I had a Corsair Flash Survivor, yeah. the amazing, like, waterproof to umpty. I dropped it in a cup of coffee. I was drinking from it. Somebody threw the coffee cup away with the $150 USB thumb drive in it. That's product testing as best. So it's hard to recover <laughs> that data. Seriously, don't lose the thumb drive. If it's bomb proof and lost, it's worthless. All right, so coming up, we read your emails. But first, here's Heather with her producer pick of the week. I sure love to be entertained, amused, to laugh hysterically without restraint. Live to laugh. That is my motto. And there's nothing quite like a good hearty internet video side splitter. Yep, those are special. But it's not all about YouTube. I get my video watching thrills elsewhere at tvinjapan.com. It's a cozy joint on the net that's dedicated to the appreciation of Japanese film and television, which is quite often totally ridiculous. Want to see weird dog tricks? Human Tetris? Maybe a music video for the new funky soy sauce flavored singles? Ah, uh, hilarity. If it's wacky, wonderful, and Japanese, it's on tvinjapan.com. Big thanks to GoDaddy for reaching out and sponsoring Techzilla. If you want to make an impact online, view it with GoDaddy.com. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Enter code TECH5, T-E-K-5, when you check out and save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. Are you ready for the horrendous moment of truth? I am, and I'm not a giant anymore. You're shorter. I am. I got off the Apple box. <laughs> not even going there. Yeah. Power button? Sure, I could totally reach that. Will it live? It's like drum roll please, right? This is so exciting. It is. So if it doesn't live, we're gonna talk about how to basically go through. Oh wait. Oh good, this is a good sign. 
It's um, alive. Yeah, well, we're not going to set it up right now. We'll talk about that <laughs> next week, or actually when we get back uh, after CES. Right. And we're going to talk to you about setting up your operating system and configuring drivers and dealing with all the BIOS settings. And I know we glossed over some stuff in there, but you know what? It's, it's kind of slot A into tab B. If there's specific questions that scare you about how to deal with, like, I don't know, serial ATA connectors? What, yeah. was, was the pro, what was the like was the processor graphics card, or was it all easy? I, I think it was pretty easy. I mean, being a newbie, I have to tell you that this was relatively easy. I was shocked at how easy it was. And I mean, I, I asked him many times, like, really, is that all you have to do? Is just a little snap in here and a little snap in there? And um, basically, yeah, that's that's it. So uh, when we come back, operating system, BIOS, all that good stuff. Ignore this <laughs> disk boot failure because we haven't installed the operating system yet. I look forward to doing that. Congratulations. Yay, made it. Yay. Yes, stage four dork. <laughs> dork? Nerd. That's bad. So now it's time for your viewer mail. First step reads, I'm looking for a DVD player that's just plain old DVD. No Blu-ray, HD, DVD. How much should I be expecting to pay? And where should I look for one? Nathan from Evansville. Well, you know, you, you may be paying next to nothing because if you walk into Walmart on the right day, you can buy a, a DVD player with this video out for like 20 bucks. Big, Is that right? I it's ridiculous. Seen it that I've seen low. $35 like on sale. Wow. So, the big question is are you connecting to a standard def television or an HD TV? If you're going standard def, grab the cheapest name brand off the shelf. If you want something to pump in your HD TV, it's worth searching out a good upscaling player. Uh, probably with an HDMI output. Sony doesn't make my personal DVP NS75H anymore. How's that for an acronym? Or a bunch of letters and numbers. It's been replaced by the DVP NS77H. You can get that for 90 to 100 bucks on sale. Oppo's 980H, 170 bucks, gets rave reviews. And the DV981HD from Oppo adds in Ferrugia processing, which is pretty sweet. Cool. All right, so email number two reads, could you guys uh, recommend a good LCD monitor to me? I'm looking for something around 19 inches, affordable and good enough performance so that when I game with it, I won't notice any glaring issues from Greg. In beautiful Redding, California. In Redding. Okay, this is one of those mad prices are gonna vary vastly areas, so shop carefully. Online is really good. Costco actually has some amazing deals yeah. on monitors. I picked up a couple of 20 inch monitors for 200 bucks when they were like 250, 300 bucks everywhere else. Now, 19 inches, a sweet spot for cheap monitors. Samsung and Dell are my two favorite sources right now. PC World rates ViewSonic and NEC as their best buys. Shop around on the prices. You should be paying 200 and 250 dollars. Yeah, and that's if you want like the warranty and buy it new, but always like Craigslist or someplace like that, you can probably get it for super cheap. I'd be really careful with Craigslist because a lot of people are selling really old 19 inch monitors yes. now and they may not have the kind of uh, performance he's looking for for gaming, the refresh rate on the monitors. That's why Patrick Check really takes over carefully. the advice. <laughs> All right, so email us with any questions and comments, techzilla at revisionblue.com. I think that's it. Good night. Good night. Did not just say that. I did. Fucking <laughs> bitch. I'll take you right now, producer. <laughs> so this is your first time. This is my first time. Oh, Be gentle. That's, sorry, Be gentle. stop. Restart. That's a creepy Leo moment. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, they got weird. They got weird. Okay, Very sorry ugly. about that. Hey, rewind over that, dude. <laughs>